Well, hello there, all you sexy thrill seekers. Hi. Hi. I hope you're ready for another action filled episode of Red Movie Rama. I hope you're ready for some crazy high adventure of 3D action because we're going to cover the 1983 Treasure of the Four Crowns. Oh, jeez. Well, sounds like we've got a uh, another crapper on our hands. What are you talking about? How, how can you tell that just from the name of the movie? Well, well, first of all, it's because I've never heard of this movie. If it was any good, I, I probably would have already heard about it. So, is is this a major motion picture? Well, yeah, it is. Kinda. It's a it's a canon film. Canon, canon. But that. That says it all right there, Skippy. You you know this is no good. I, well, I happen to love this movie, and it's 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 terrible. I'll give you that. It's terrible, but I love it. So we're gonna talk about well, it. Okay, okay. Jeez, don't get your hanky in a wad. Oh, I like that movie, boy. It's about that guy that started up Burger King. I'm pretty sure that's not it, Randy. Actually, it's an Italian flick, and you know how I am about the uh, the rip off Italian flicks, and this is one of those. We are. Pretty much ripping off uh, every action flick that's ever existed right here. Yep. Sounds terrible. Yeah, but I'm going to have a blast talking about it. So take it away, Rick. Treasure of the Four Crowns is a 1983 action adventure film shot in 3D. Directed by Ferdinando Baldi. An adventurer assembles a team of daredevils to retrieve four mystical crowns from the heavily guarded resting place. Starring Tony Anthony as J.T. Stryker, Anna Obregon as Liz, Gene Quintano as Edmund, Francisco Rabal as Socrates, and Jerry Lazarus as Rick. And a whole cast of bad guys who get killed by flamethrowers. Back to you, Rick. So, uh, let me, uh, let me get this straight. The, the star of this movie's name is Tony Anthony. Yeah, I, I believe that's right. So, Anthony Anthony is the star of this movie. No, very possibly. I, I don't know that that's his name. Starring Antonio Anthony. Uh, you're just getting crazy now. How about that band called Tony, Tony, Tony? <laughs> that might be the funniest thing you've said, Randy. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into this one. We start off with J.T. Stryker, and he's sneaking around in the old castle, and it's full of booby traps. Well, well let me guess. It's going to be like uh, snakes and skulls and a big rolling rock. Like that Indiana guy? Yeah, there's, there's some of that stuff in there. So, so does this guy, you know, wear the brown jacket and got the bull whip and all that stuff, too? No, Stryker is wearing a, a red members-only jacket and some white cargo pants. Well, at, at least he's a snappy dresser. D- does he have to fight anything that's, like, really dangerous? Well, you know, he does fight some pretty good-sized vultures and a small pterodactyl. Oh, well, that's... That's not ridiculous at all. Uh, well, anyways, after after he fights a pack of wild dogs, what? he falls into a tunnel that looks like it's from the movie 2001, and then he jumps down on a trampoline and lands in a treasure room. Wow, so this... Wow, this movie's moving pretty quick. It doesn't sit still at all. Hey, is there, like, remains of, like, other people in there? Because, you know, they tried to find the treasure, and they don't succeed. They die in there. Oh, sure, yeah. They're, they're all over the place. But but J.T., Stryker, he's the man. Well, ho, ho, ho. What, what makes you think that, Skippy? Well, because he thinks he knows where the treasure is, and it's in this tomb. And it's sitting in the middle of the room. And he takes a couple of strips of his pants off and just rips them off and lays them across the top of this tomb. And he stands back with a detonator and hits the button, and it blows the lid right off this tomb. Wow, he's he's just a regular McGavern then, isn't he? I don't think that's the right name you're looking for, but yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. And he opens up the casket, and inside of it is a dead king, and he finds the treasure inside with the king, and it's a staff with a beautiful headpiece on it. <laughs> yeah, that's hot! Oh, no, not not this dude. We just even get going. Just put a lid on it. So this uh, this staff, is it worth a lot of money, then? Well, the thing is, is we don't find out because he basically leaves it behind because in the headpiece is a key. 
And that's what the treasure is really about. Well, it sounds like he just kind of waltzed in there and's not going to have any problems getting out. Actually, as soon as he gets the key, the room turns into like a haunted house and you hear a bunch of evil laughing and smoke fills the room and then a couple of floating crossbows come after him. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I hope this doesn't get too scary. I, I don't like scary. Well, it, it doesn't get too scary. Matter of fact, these ghosts are really not that good of shots and they miss him a whole bunch. But, uh, you know, he's making it out to another room. Well, if I was him... I I wouldn't mess around. I'd get out of there as fast as possible. Well, he tries, but then they start shooting fireballs at him. And then when he's running, off in the corner, there's these huge fireballs, and they're up on these racks. And they start falling and rolling after him, and he's running away from the big balls of fire. Yeah, now that's really hot. Oh, I think I got an idea for a song. It's already been written, Randy. Man, you weren't kidding. This movie's just ripping off... Indiana Jones, big time. Yeah, and then Stryker jumps out a stained glass window and runs for his life, and the whole castle blows up. I, I hope he sure gets away before the cops show up. He could be in a lot of trouble. Well, he's working for some government-ran archaeologists, so I don't think he has to really worry about that. So, so is this the end? I mean, he he got the key and everything's done, right? Uh, no, th- he's got the key that opens one crown, and there's four crowns, so there's three other crowns he's got to go find. So, d- does he even know where where these crowns are? Sure do. They uh, they're in the hands of a crazy cult leader named Brother Jonas. D- don't you mean the the Jonas Brothers? Yeah, I wish that would, that would make for a much uh, much more entertaining movie for sure. Well, they're they're no Celine Dion, but they're pretty good. So the professor at this uh, archaeological museum is wanting Stryker to put a team together and go steal the crowns for him. So, so I don't get it. I mean, I know they're crowns that are probably worth some money, but why Why all the hoopla about these crowns? Because inside of these crowns is the elements that will give you ultimate power. Oh, wait, that's hand- Hey, wait a minute. Can you say this is some crazy cult leader guy? Yeah, Brother Jonas. Well, we don't need some crazy guy like that with ultimate power. Holy jeez, that would be terrible. You're catching on as well. It's exactly why they want to steal the crown, so he won't have them. Ah, okay, got it. So so let me guess, a ragtag team, bunch of misfits being put together? Yeah, absolutely. You've got uh, a guy named Socrates, who's currently a strong man that works in a circus, but he's got a heart condition. And you got Liz, who also works in the circus, and she's some sort of acrobat. And then you got Rick Martin. Oh, hold on. Excuse me. Hold, did you say Rick Martin? Like Ricky Martin? Boy, I like that Ricky Martin, man. He was in that band called Menudo. Yep, that's exactly who I'm talking about, Randy. No, no, this is this is a different guy. This is an Italian guy. It looks like Ron Perlman, but uh, he's supposed to be an expert climber, and he's got a real bad alcohol problem. Well, of course he does, Skippy. Who, who wants somebody that's really reliable in this movie? Cheesh. And let me guess about this cult leader. Let's see. Uh, they probably live on an isolated mountain and lots of guards and you can't get in, you can't get out. And these guys are going to have to sneak their way in. Yeah, that's uh, you're dead on as well. How, how did you figure that? Because that's pretty much every movie like this that's been made. It's the same story. And so they're going to sneak in there and there'll be a bunch of booby traps and a bunch of people with machine guns. And they'll go in there and they'll get the three crowns and get out. Well, this, they only got two crowns. Well, hold on. So, so the, the archaeologist had one crown. This guy's got two. Where's the other one? Yeah, we, we don't know right now, actually. Well, that's a bunch of hockey. I mean, the movie's called The Treasure of the Four Crowns, not three. Yeah, we'll get to that in a little bit. But right now, our ragtag team, they're in a a lot of good luck here because it is a crazy initiation weekend at uh, Brother Jonas's cult hangout. Well, they they should be able to just kind of just walk on in then. Sure enough, and also they feel so confident they decide to take one of the professors with them as well. Well, sure, the the more the merrier, right? Well, he's also got the ability to crack some codes and, you know, build some electronic devices, so he, he is kind of handy. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> Really convenient. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, anyways, this group, they make it to the top of Brother Jonas's mountain, and they make it all the way to a room that's filled with laser beams and floor sensors, so they're going to have to suspend themselves from the ceiling and work their way across the room. Well, hey, that's, that's pretty high tech for 1983. Can these guys, can you see the laser beams, or do they do the mist thing where they shoot the smoke and they can see the beams? No, that, that movie hadn't come out, so they couldn't rip it off just yet, but they do have 
have a little piece of glass that they can hold up in front of their eyes and kind of see the beams, but they can only see it with that one piece of glass. Uh, it seems like they would have just made, like, several pairs of glasses and just wore those, and they would all be able to see the beams. Well, that... That would make sense, but, you know, we want things to be as difficult as possible. So, question, Skippy. I mean, are all the guards just hanging out, or are they on duty, or what's going on here? Where is everybody? Well, there's a few guards that are out and about doing their rounds, you know, but uh, everybody else is uh, in a big ceremony where they meet Brother Jonas for the first time, all the newbies that have come in, and uh, he's healing a woman's got to... sores all over her body. Oh, geez. He's one of those guys, huh? So what's he gonna do? Take his jacket off and hit her with it and she'll be healed? Uh, no, not really, because if he did that, it would probably kill her because his jacket has about 40 cowbells tied to it. What? Cowbells? Why? Well, I mean, why Why cowbells? Your guess is as good as mine, buddy. This guy sounds like he's a real freak. Yeah, so this is keeping everybody occupied while we spend the next 15 minutes of the movie going across the ceiling in this room to get to the other side. Really? What's what's taking them so long? Well, this is where Liz kind of saves everybody's butt, being the acrobat that she is. They go across the ceiling where there's this big wooden beam, and she goes through and puts a series of trapezes up so they can just swing from one to the other to the other side of the building. Well, I guess you just work with what you got. I mean, you figure these things would be high tech. Well, it all works for the the purpose of what they're doing, but they've got a bigger problem than that, because right when you get to the main corridor where the statue is, where they have the two crowns mounted, um, Socrates is letting Stryker down on a rope, and Socrates has a heart attack. What? And falls off the ledge, and the ropes catch him just before he hits the floor, but oh, he no. hangs there and dies. Oh, you know, I, I don't like that at all. That all. I mean, this, that's going to mess up the whole plan, not to mention his best friend dying. Well, I, I don't know that they were best friends. Well, in, in my mind, Skippy, they're best friends, so th- you just might as well accept it. They're best friends. Okay, just cool down, man. But uh, this really uh, messes up the plans, but they're going to try to go ahead and uh, get the two crowns anyways. I don't I don't think that's a good idea, Skippy. Things can go really bad right here. Uh, well, you're exactly right, because Stryker climbs up on the statue that's got the two crowns, and he goes to put the key into one of the crowns, and when it does, it sets off a booby trap, and some spikes come out of the wall, and it kills Ricky Martin. Holy crap, they need to get out of there. They're going to end up killing everybody that's in the group. Uh, Not only that, but it sets off an alarm, so now here comes everybody. Even Brother Jonas is coming their way. Oh, no. Well, I hope they're wearing some sort of camouflage so they can't be seen. No, Tony's still wearing those white cargo pants. Uh, Sometimes you have to let fashion go to the side and do what's sensible. That's true, but uh, it doesn't really help because at this point, Stryker gets hit in the eyes with some steam and it knocks him off the statue. See? Should have been wearing some goggles. Yep, and Stryker tells the professor, hey, you need to go up there and get those crowns because I'm not capable at the moment. And when the professor climbs up there, the statue has these two snake arms that come down and grab the professor and squeeze him to death and then a snake pops out of this hole and it bites him on the face and kills him. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I mean, that's that's three people that we've killed, that we followed for an hour and a half, and now they're all dead within 30 seconds of each other. I, I don't like where this is going, Skip. Yeah, I think uh, Stryker's feeling the same way, so while he's going to try to attempt to get the crowns one more time, Liz is up top cutting out a stained glass window so they can escape. Uh, it sounds like she's the only smart one in the bunch trying to get out of there. Good for her. Well, Stryker gets up to the crowns and he actually opens the top of them and you see the two jewels that are inside. One is the ultimate form of evil and the other is the ultimate form of good. Okay, hold on, Skippy. So, why why wouldn't they just grab the crowns and take them with them and then they could open them like at another place and just get vamoose and get out of there? Great question. I don't know. Good grief, this movie. And right at that point, Brother Jonas and all of his henchmen walk in, and Stryker puts his hands on both of the jewels, and his head just starts spinning. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. I, I, uh, maybe I misheard something, but I think you said his head was spinning? Yeah, it's quite comical, matter of fact. That makes no sense. Oh, uh, you want to talk about no sense, just hold on to your hat. The striker turns around and looks like half his face has been melted off. What? Almost like he would belong in the cantina in Star Wars. What? And what? he starts shooting flames out of his hands because he's got the jewels in his hands and I, I, just setting all of Brother Jonas's people I, on fire. What? 
This this movie has completely lost its mind. Uh, hold on now. I'm not, I'm not done yet because while he's shooting flames out of his hands and setting all of Brother Jonas's people on fire, Brother Jonas starts, like, melting? And then lasers start shooting out of his face. Oh, come on, Skippy. This this is just this has gone too far. This doesn't make a lick of sense at all, at all. Yeah, but it's totally freaking awesome, though. You you need help. And Striker burns up Brother Jonas till he's nothing but a skeleton and some cowbells. Yeah, man. Now you know that's hot. It's some somehow I just knew he was gonna say that. So so what about uh, Striker and Liz? Are are they gonna be okay? Yeah, they they make it out and a helicopter comes pick them up. Really. A helicopter. I mean, they sneak in this place, and a helicopter's just gonna come get them and take them out. That's why didn't they just send like the army in to stop these crazy people? Because it's it's not that kind of movie. It's it's entertainment as well. So I, I guess everything's good now because we got two of the other crowns in the hands of the good people, right? No, actually, Striker decides to uh, leave the crowns in the inner workings there and just throws them in the fire, and that's it. He doesn't take them back. What? Uh, 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 what? Well, I mean, that's just a, that's a whole wasted trip. Lost all of his friends, his best friend, and, and, and now he won't get paid. Well, I, I think he was figuring out that because of all this, that it wasn't worth the money to lose people like he did. So he decided that it didn't belong to be in anybody's hands. Oh, I, I get it. So it's one of those deeper meaning kind of things. I, I get it, Skippy. So, uh... Uh, well, that was good. I'm, I'm glad. Is it over? Well, almost. Uh, it fades from Brother Jonas's body burning up to a swamp. A, a, what? A swamp? Yeah, and this big pile of goop floats up to the top of the water. What? It looks like it's got some drainage pipe in the middle Dra- of it. And pipe? this head of some kind of sea creature pops out of it. What? And it's like a 3D kind of thing, and then the uh, movie's over. What? <laughs> what? I, I, what? What? I mean, they, they, they don't. What does that have to do with anything? We have no idea, as well. That's just the way this thing ends. That that's probably the worst ending for a movie I've ever heard of, Skippy. Uh, you know what? It's bonkers and it makes no sense. But I kind of like it. Yeah, that I I never doubted that you wouldn't, Skippy. So what about the rest of you? What did you guys think? Yeah, I thought it was a real good movie. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it because this is one of those movies that uh, it's it's not really good, but it's just crazy enough to keep you entertained. It does get a little clunky in the middle, but the ending of it pays off so huge that you at least have to check it out just to experience it. And it just shows that in the 80s, it was kind of anything goes. Speaking of going, we'll check you later. Adios, people.